Excellent. Well, thanks again, everyone, for being here for our second Meet the Candidate session in 2015. Again, I'm Holly Ross, and I am really thrilled to talk to so many amazing candidates today. We've had such a wonderful turnout from all over the world, which has been really fascinating and wonderful. So uh, today, again, uh, we are going to be um, we are going to be going through a few uh, questions from myself, as well as integrating questions in from our uh, attendees who are listening in, and um, we will get to those in just a minute. But one of the first things that I want to do is go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about who's on the call with us today. So uh, joining us today, and I think these are in semi-alphabetical order, if not actual alphabetical order. <laughs> uh, Kelly Albrecht uh, is our uh, first candidate with the A name. <laughs> So um, Kelly's been working in Drupal for over 10 years and has founded a, a couple different businesses in the Drupal world, which is really uh, interesting and fun. And I need to know where Kelly's picture was taken. Uh, uh, Purgatory Chasm um, in central Massachusetts. Ah, OK. I was going to say, that looks like the very definition of between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> Um, excellent. So Kelly is here with us. We also have um, Jean. Jean, I like to say your name with a French accent. Can I call you Bernier? Is that how you say it yourself? You may. Okay, thanks. You may, yeah. <laughs> um, Jean, Jean is the co-founder of Cheeky Monkey Media, a, a Drupal shop up in, um, up in Canada. I always have to stop myself from saying Canada. <laughs> Um, and uh, Jean has been working in Drupal since 4.6, so we have another uh, Drupal entrepreneur here on our hands. Um, Ani Gupta uh, is joining us from India, and Ani it works with Accelerant, but he has also been in the Drupal business since uh, version 4 and has also um, helped start up a couple of Drupal um, companies over the last few years in the growing market in India. Uh, Alex Matthews is joining us all the way from Wellington, New Zealand. Um, so I don't know about you guys, but he's hands down my winner for best accent today. <laughs> all right, good. I'm glad you chuckled when I said that. <laughs> um, and John, Al or, sorry, um, Alex also has a web development uh, firm uh, that he started up and has been working in Drupal for the last, uh, I think it's about five years now. Um, and we have Carlos Ospina, who is Colombian by birth and living in Texas now, um, has helped uh, found a couple of Drupal businesses as well, um, and was really in, uh, integral in helping us launch DrupalCon Latin America in Bogota just a couple of weeks ago. And it looks like um, Pratchit was able to join. So let me just give me one more second here. And let's see, I opened up your microphone. Are you there? Hey, hi, Holly. Yep. Ta-da! That's awesome. Hey, so, so sorry, guys. I'm late. No, I'm just glad you were able to make it work. I know sometimes the software is a little, <laughs> bit, a little bit goofy. All right. Uh, so now out of off. Hey, out Roger. Of hey, hey, honey. <laughs> um, good. So um, Brachit's here also from uh, representing uh, India. Um, and... Um, has also been uh, a very um, sorry. Has also been very busy in the Drupal business space uh, in India as well. Been working in um, Drupal for a number of years too. So um, I think your start, if I remember your story, you really got started in 2011 when Dries first visited India. Yep. All right. So that's who's on the line with us. Um, when you guys uh, answer questions today, just a reminder to please say your first name when you get started so that um, people who don't know your voice uh, can follow along. And I will do my best to get your smiling faces up on the screen um, as we go along as well. Uh, sometimes it takes me a couple of clicks to get there, so don't be surprised if you look like someone else for a moment. OK, you mm -hmm. guys ready to go? Ready here. Go for it. Yeah. OK. So I'm going to pitch a couple of questions your way. Feel free to just um, jump in and give your answer. Um, I'm going to try my best to keep track and make sure that um, everyone has a chance to address the question um, as well. And we are going to ask you to uh, keep your responses down to about 90 seconds or so uh, so that everyone has a chance to get at these questions. So uh, some of these will be familiar to you because my set of questions is standard across all of these. But uh, 
my first question for you uh, is, what is the most critical issue facing the project today? And how can the association contribute to addressing it? Uh, I'm happy to field the first answer in that regard, Holly, if that's OK. You betcha. Um, uh, I've been thinking about this a lot, especially since listening to yesterday's session. Uh, and I've realized sorry, that name, name, name. Oh, sorry, it's, it's Alex sorry. Matthews here. Pardon me. Yes, Alex, um, sorry. <laughs> I thought my accent would give us away, but no, I'll make it clearer. Uh, so I consult a lot of large organizations that deal with Drupal strategy and web strategy and software strategy in general. And uh, the emergence of each Drupal version and moving into Drupal 8, um, I feel as though there could be a lot more sort of uh, clarity because there's a disconnect uh, between when is the next version coming out, should we invest you know, huge amounts of money uh, in moving to it. Um, and I feel as though this is true both on the really large uh, sort of enterprise and government scale as it is also for like the young hobbyists who are just getting into it. Um, and I believe that there should be a really uh, thorough effort towards advocating and communicating Drupal strategy from the association and from the developers and from the community uh, back to the end users and the clients who end up funding us. So I feel as though yeah, there needs to be more emphasis on communicating what the strategy is to all the stakeholders. Um, if I may get in there, um, I think uh, what uh, uh, Alex said is fantastic, but you know what, uh, from business side of things, um, there is a massive amount of um, a massive amount of education that needs to still happen for, for a lot of people that want to adopt Drupal. Now Gartner has a lot of information out, and a lot of businesses depend on on that, but people still don't know Drupal is a fantastic enterprise level solution. How do we um, tackle that as a Drupal Association member? Shouldn't we try and focus on that also? Drupal Association focuses a lot on DrupalCon and uh, Drupal.org, but perhaps business side of things is something that I would like to see also. Well, this is uh, Kelly. I'll uh, jump in, and I, I agree with uh, what everybody has said. Um, I would add that uh, one of the issues that, that I'm seeing is it's getting increasingly harder to get more talent into the into the uh, Drupal aspect of this industry. Um, I think there are a number of reasons for that and I've been um, very involved over the last uh, couple few years trying to get uh, you know outreach in the community and maybe not even just Drupal for like for younger kids but more computer science um, and getting a more uh, diverse crowd interested in um, programming and in uh, web development um, and finding ways to get them in here and then counting on Drupal to be that awesome option that I know it is so that they they choose, they're interested and they, they want to choose it and, and work in it. And then I won't have such a hard time hiring uh, people to do all the Drupal work that is, that is out there as the world has uh, pretty much standardized on Drupal. Um, and so one of the things I think the association could do to help is to focus more on the on the groups and people that are doing that that outreach into the community and trying to find ways to let those next Drupal rock, uh, rock stars know that uh, they have a home here in uh, in Drupal doing Drupal work. Being here as well, I have to agree with Kelly and everybody, Alex and any of, ahead of us as well too. I think another part really. Hey, hey, Jean, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Can you sorry. Oh. We. Can you, can you speak a little? Oh, yeah. Is you're very big again. Oh, how's that? Better. Better. All right. So I was just saying that uh, I think another part of that is how do we improve onboarding people into this, in the systems, and and getting you know kind of, it can be a little squirrely at times trying to figure out you know what are the best ways to go about things. And a lot of people that are new to it can be just kind of thrown into the wolves. Well, how do we help better bring those people on? So that, you know, that helps with, you know, bringing new talent up. But as well, that you know, onboarding can represent, you know, how do we bring more business into Drupal? Because, well, at the end of the day, all the shop owners are, are using this to make money, to push things forward. 
how can we help them better educate and you know put people through the process of saying hey this is a great platform this is why it's better than you know WordPress or Joomla or any of the other things that their our clients are going to be coming to us with because a lot of the times nowadays people are coming to the shops asking for Drupal so you know that part is a little bit solved but still how do we bring good talent on how do we share what are the good ideas um, one of the things I think would be critical to adding on is how do we start to kind of rank modules and things like that again there used to be a, a great site out there that does that but you see WordPress and other uh, open source projects doing that kind of stuff and that those, those are things that can help get people moving forward faster I think too um, if I may jump in here um, honestly I, I really don't think that ranking modules is going to help Drupal I think Drupal itself uh, especially with Drupal 8 um, where we are heading in terms of establishing a core structure and basically becoming a platform Drupal is no longer in the same category as WordPress or Joomla to me honestly I mean the way I sell Drupal is a platform sorry who's built uh, sorry it's Ani by the way it's Ani uh, yeah. I, I'm, so I, I, uh, yeah. it's Ani <laughs> So uh, what I'm what I'm what I'm trying to say is that yes, um, what I'm uh, trying to say is that yes, for businesses, it's important to understand the distinction now between Drupal 8 and what is a CMS. We, Drupal to me is no longer a CMS only; it is to me a platform. And for that, I can you know I mean as a business, yes, I can sell that. I can build a platform around it. Gartner is uh, ranking Acquia and the top quadrant today so I can use that also but yes for me uh, but how does Drupal Association play a role there I don't I'm not very clear about that but I'm not sure but Drupal Association should get into the business side of things well I am uh, I'm glad to have some counterpoint on the call but I want to make sure also that we have a chance to hear from a couple other folks so um, Carlos and, and Rachi if you're there and want to respond to yep. that question um, hey uh, everybody. Yeah, thanks, Hello, Hello everybody. This is Roger. I believe the most critical, you know, uh, issues that Drupal project uh, right now is facing is, you know, the awareness. I've been leading Drupal a community in India and in, in city called Mumbai for the last six years. And the biggest challenge that I've been facing is to get people onboarded on, you know, Drupal to know more about, you know, what exactly this Drupal Association, what are the initiatives, you know, how do they benefit by participating in code sprints and a lot of other things related to. And I believe this is the same story with other parts of India and maybe, you know, other parts of the country as well. So awareness and reaching out to people is, I think, you know, the prime concern and as well as the participation. Awesome. And Carlos, do you want to also um, address this? Yes. Um, you are also a little bit faint, Carlos. OK, I'll try to get closer. Uh, OK, can you hear me better now? Yeah. OK, this is Carlos Ospina. Uh, so we've, we, we've been talking about all the problems that we have with Drupal with uh, Drupal right now. You know, we have the promotion, the awareness. Uh, I will add the diversity of the community is getting more diverse, if I can say that. The shortage on developers, the learning curve, um, that balance between the businesses and the community, which is so important and, and so interesting about the Drupal community and the Drupal ec ecosystem. But I think the most pressing uh, concern right now is Drupal 8 because we cannot move forward correctly with any of this until we have Drupal 8 that is changing uh, pretty much everything in Drupal. Uh, we have a, um, finally a correct way to develop, we have finally a much better site building experience, uh, we're finally embracing accessibility, embracing responsiveness and mobile. So I think um, we have a good start with the grants for Drupal core developers, um, but I think that's something that we can work more is on on, on on getting more business involved and follow the ideas expressed by 
Dries on Drupal Con Austin and, 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 give, and, and find ways how the business can invest or let their people invest time on Drupal core development. So we can move Drupal Lake forward and then we can work on promotion, on, on the shortage of developers, on the learning curve, on a new system that is much better and for me much easier. Thank you. Um, can I can I add to what Carlos said? I think Carlos brought up a very important point. Drupal 8, yes. It's a massive rewrite. And I'm selling Drupal 8. So sorry, a lot of people are uh, using Drupal 8. Oh, sorry, it's Ani. I'm so sorry. I keep forgetting to do it myself. It's Ani. Come on, Ani. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, right? <laughs> I uh, just get caught up in things. Um, what Carlos is saying is fantastic. I mean, this is a very important thing. Drupal 8, I mean, hey, we you going to, you know, where are you going to be ready when, he, when it's going to be there and all that? Look, uh, from what I see, um, a lot of companies are already using Drupal 8 and launching projects in it. Drupal 8 is a massively different version of Drupal. Uh, it's mobile friendly and everything, and I think. Um, as Drupal Association, yes. I think Drupal Association is already doing a lot of uh, work around understanding or letting people know what Drupal 8 is. But what Richard said, you know, a lot of people don't know what even Drupal is. Forget Drupal 8 or 7 or 6 or 4. We have to find a way to make sure that a lot of people know about Drupal. And that's, I would like to, well, that's my thing. I mean, what Roger said, also. Thank, thank, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Roger. Yeah, Roger, if you could follow up on that and just talk a little bit about, um, and then, I'll, and then every, I'd like to give the other folks a, a chance to respond as well. Talk a little bit about what you might think is um, important for the association to contribute to when it when it comes to Drupal 8. Like, what, what more should the association be doing to help support not just Drupal 8, but the release cycle in general? Um, well, this is Rachid, uh, you first. Um, I, I know for the fact that there are organizations who started using Drupal 8, but, uh, you know, this is done in silos and, you know, the promotions of, uh, you know, who is using, how are they using and how they're consuming Drupal 8 is still not out. So maybe Drupal Association can help by publishing a success story or, you know, kind of case study on Drupal 8 adoption policy, migration policy, and maybe you know some resources and you know uh, you know training material around that if somebody wants to you know migrate how you know they can probably go about it and that's my point um uh, uh, to add, uh, this is Ani. Uh, to add to what Rachid said hey, Ani, by the way. Ani, uh, can Drupal. we let Ani, can, Ani, can we let some other folks Sorry. get a word in? Oh, well, absolutely, absolutely. I'm sorry. All right, thanks. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm gonna chip in. And you and me, yeah, we, we're the same. I have to bite my tongue right here to not intervene <laughs> on every other answer. <laughs> uh, so, um, th this is what I think, and, and, and this is what I'm saying. I'm not talking, we have to wait for Drupal 8. I think that all that we have said is important, and the, and the support, I mean, Drupal 8 will come with a better release cycle, better versioning, uh, a way to do it that will solve the problem. When is the next version? Should I invest? If they're going to get Drupal 9 soon or not? We, we will know in a better way. It's easier to understand from the site building perspective, from the front end perspective, and honestly, in my experience, even from the development perspective. It will open a wider variety of developers because now we're using a standard development. Now that spaghetti, weird, hooking code that we have, but something better. And it's, it's more professional. I mean, it's easier to, to offer Drupal A at, to bigger companies and to the small companies at the same time. So um, what I think the, the, the association can do is make sure you, we get to a point where we can start building this new era or these new needs on top of Drupal 8 on, and not on our crippled little brother that is Drupal 7, really, uh, compared to Drupal 8. Um, and that's what I meant before. I, I think that the, the grants that have been uh, going around helping companies is good. I think that um, the ideas that are around um, 
uh, I, I forgot the word about the special marketing options for companies using uh, Drupal that will let them, you know, get more money and therefore give time to their developers to, 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 to help with the software as such. Uh, I, I think all those uh, are, are the things that we should be working on so we can start building over the, the, the new era, again, era, that is Drupal A and, and, and we we'll work from there. And, and grow the business and the community at the same time because again I insist we we need to keep that balance that beautiful balance that exists between business and community in the in the Drupal ecosystem that makes it so interesting and so different to any other open project open source project out there thank you thanks Carlos I just want to talk about what specifically the association can or should be doing yeah I'll uh, I'll jump in uh, this is Kelly um, Last Call Media is one of those shops that has a Drupal 8 website, and the reason why we did that, it was an extension of uh, an adoption of the Give Drupal uh, philosophy, uh, where we were doing monthly sprint fees to, to uh, contribute to Drupal and to work as a team together, and uh, building Drupal 8, uh, Drupal 8 website grew out of that, and we were able to contribute a lot of fixes back to Drupal 8 and get familiar with contributing to Drupal 8. And it was easier for our developers to want to jump in on sprint days at Drupal 8. And it was a really a great bonding experience. And it was a great business move to get a Drupal 8 website up. And, and uh, also a great uh, training to get you know ahead of the curve on what's coming out. And I that really worked for us. And I think it really worked for giving back to the community. Um, I think it'd be cool. Um, I've, I've struggled with an answer to this question because I know the Drupal Association is already doing so much. I feel like I may, I may suggest something that you're already doing, but um, just a way to to help other shops to to feel like this is something that they would like to do as a shop. Um, a lot of times, you know, I, I know a lot of other web web development shop owners, and I think to myself, like, they should redo their site in Drupal 8. That'd be great if we just had a whole bunch of Drupal 8 websites. And uh, just to really show, um, and to have, and then you can write blog posts. You can, you can explain, you know, just to create create that marketing buzz. Um, and I think the Drupal Association could assist in adding some structure to that. Um, and I guess uh, unrelated, a second idea um, that I've been thinking of. I don't know how viable it is, but um, it would be cool because we consult with a lot of big companies that want to know when is Drupal like coming. And as it gets closer, it gets harder and harder for them to start a new project in Drupal 7 because they think, well, are we going to start this in 7 and then it is going to be ready soon? Um, I was, I've been wondering if there'd be a way to create like a, a pool where they could donate money because all you know large companies donate to some nonprofit or, or whatever uh, to make a donation to to further fund some of the the grants that the Drupal Association is uh, putting together. And we can all sprint on this together and get it. Yeah. Awesome. I'm, just, I'm quite keen to follow on from what Kelly said there, if that's all right. Please do, Alex. Okay, I'll try and make this brief. Um, basically, I really support the idea that uh, we should be engaging uh, the stakeholder community far beyond just Drupal.org, uh, and that you know there's a lot of people who are using Drupal, uh, people in government, people in large businesses, the cafe down the road. You know, there's a great deal of people who are not necessarily technical, who are not necessarily a part of the community, um, and yet it does impact them, and they've got a big interest and a big stake uh, in this technology. Um, as a consultant, when trying to sell Drupal solutions, I often encounter that sort of barrier, and I feel as though, uh, like, even the resources on Drupal.org at the moment about Drupal 8, uh, while they're good, I still feel as though they're angled more towards a developer and less towards a technology strategist or less towards someone who might be making an investment. Uh, the two main areas that I would like to see the Drupal Association grow in uh, would be advocacy and market share of CMSs and web technologies in general. Uh, but I'd also like to see it being able to engage more young people and that whole education quotient and bringing in hobbyists and new site developers. So I feel as though the association, to specifically answer the question around what the association could be doing, I feel as though while the developers have a really good community already, that we should be expanding our focus to advocate towards a larger pool of stakeholders and therefore achieve a larger market share of the CMS um, and hopefully bring in some talented fresh blood into the pool as well. 
Awesome. And Gene? Yeah. I'd have to pretty much agree with Alex completely. He, that was extremely well, well said, and I think what is really going to be important to uh, push this forward. Yes, I wanted to, to chip in and say, I mean, I think that the points is, are simple. The grants need to keep going. Uh, we need some marketing that is not, uh, you know, a company doing marketing for themselves, not Acre, not Pantheon, but the Drupal Association helping to promote Drupal as such. And as um, Alex said, not towards developers that are already do, using Drupal, but outside to get new people and companies knowing what they can get with Drupal and, and, and find a company. And something that we can add there is some kind of organization on the release cycle that is happening, but I believe the Drupal Association can play a part in helping control, in a way, that release cycle. In that way, we will not have the big question that I hear today is, is when is Drupal 8 coming? If Drupal 8 is coming is right now, when is Drupal 9? Uh, is it going to happen in a year, in two years? Should I move from seven to nine to eight or wait until nine or something like that? If we have more organization there, I think we can have a better path. And finally, um, promoting stuff like large skin of the Drupal Con Latin America uh, 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 or, or creating, uh, you know, media documents, what posts like that that, 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 that will help a lot everybody to get more business and more developers. Sorry. Excellent. Well, I want you guys all to know that um, Ani is so excited about your answers <laughs> that, that my, my question queue is filled I'm with it. my question queue is filled with plus one, and I can't agree more. <laughs> you guys all have you guys all have a fervent admirer in Ani. <laughs> Um, I want to switch gears a little bit um, and get to one of the questions that came in um, from one of the community members. Um, and we've spent a lot of time talking about the software at this point and how the association can play a role in um, the promotion of the software and the release cycle of, so of the software. Um, I would love to know what you guys are thinking about when it comes to uh, local Drupal communities and, and what role should the association, association play in supporting those local user groups? Um, I'll Ooh, jump in. I'd, to jump in. Uh, I'd love to be able oh, to answer that. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> who, said, who said first? One other time, guys. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go in alphabetical order on this one, um, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna start with Kelly, and we'll see if it goes well from there. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, I uh, don't know if this is my best answer, but this is just what popped into my mind first. Um, on the, the last conference that I was organizing out here, I really uh, wanted to have like a bigger, like a sprint day um, that was at a larger scale than than some sometimes at different conferences that they feel a little bit cobbled together. And I was looking for a streamlined way to um, get some help from the Drupal Association for help with that event. And then also, I think to extend that idea a little further, it would be cool to have. Uh, a structure or a mechanism to, uh, you know, reach out to the Drupal Association. Maybe they could facilitate uh, getting some, you know, a top quality speaker in the area that that I may not know about, or or one that would be willing to fly out and and uh, speak on something uh, for a for a fee. Um, but to, to facilitate some of that, uh, bringing bringing uh, presenters into our our groups, I would be interested in that. That's cool. You're all afraid to fill the void now, huh? <laughs> okay, so I'll, 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 I'll jump in. I'll jump in. Who's next? I'll jump in. 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 Hey, I'm jumping in. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but, but what Ken said is fantastic. You know, I mean, seriously, we, uh, and Rachel will, uh, will uh, uh, you know, point to that also. We've had problems trying to get a keynote, for example, for our camps. But yes, Triple Association can certainly help get us um, the names. Um, and, and trust me, you know, the big names help get the crowds and people get, uh, get excited about that. I mean, there are some heroes in the Drupal space, and I think uh, that they should be kind of, um, maybe a Drupal Association could actually have a page on them, the heroes of Drupal space or something, I don't know. Um, but in terms of uh, local communities, yes, uh, micro-grants is something that I think will be really good. 
Raja will talk about, I think, uh, DCAP, the Drupal Campus Ambassador Program, which is fantastic. And I, I, I'll tell you, you know, like we had a fantastic uh, 238 people code sprint, um, and all of these guys were from tiny little colleges in India uh, nearby. And we would love to have these kind of grants available to us to, you know, empower them. So that's my thing. Right. Thanks, Annie. Okay. Yep, yeah. I'll just say so. Um, yep, so uh, from Indian Drupal community experience, uh, there's a recent talk going on about regional representation forming a, a you know national level you know representation in Drupal Association and the the views of the person. I'll talk on behalf of you know all the leads Drupal community leads from India. So uh, one of the major challenges is that you know how they do, do they reach out to Drupal Association and make them understand what their challenges are, what their needs are, you know. So few of us are connected to Drupal Association now because of Megan's visit, and you know now we are more aware of you know what the things are. But I believe local chapters representation at Drupal Association through some mechanism is important so that Drupal Association can understand that regional needs and can then facilitate uh, you know, their requirements and you know, understand you know, which community is doing what and you know, how well we can serve them. So things like, you know, like Annie mentioned, we are working on something called Drupal Campus Ambassador mm -hmm. Program. And we're gonna, it's, it's, it's like getting you know, Drupal to educational institutions in India and probably you know, in the next phases we're gonna get it to you know, all the educational institutions in the world. So, uh, you know, and there are a lot of other initiatives that other regional uh, groups are working on. But, you know, how to, you know, facilitate that, how to get, you know, kind of mentoring on that, guidance on that, I think that's where we need help from yeah. Drupal Association. Absolutely. That's my point. Uh, Holly, can I uh, add my two cents? Yeah. yeah, go for it. All right, well, I may as well. Um, <laughs> I, I'd just like to start by acknowledging all the fantastic comments that you've all made, which I thoroughly agree with and think that, uh, you know, all of that is very, very true. Um, I would look at it from a sort of a bird's eye strategy view uh, in this case, um, because I, about two years ago, started uh, organizing the Wellington Drupal meetups. When I started, they were very small, and uh, over the past two years, we've grown them into quite a large community, which is highly engaged and very productive. I mean, by global standards, it wouldn't be a very big community. I mean, we're about 180 members and about 25 to 30 people who turn up regularly. However, in the past two years, we've developed uh, Drupal.org.nz together. Uh, we've had you know, substantial involvement with organizing uh, Drupal conferences here in New Zealand and in Australia. Uh, we've formed a huge amount of collaborations. Um, for instance, uh, Greg Anderson, from uh, one of the co-maintainers of Drush, he came to Wellington not so long ago, and our community had the benefit of being able to catch up with him and learn a lot. Uh, we've connected with the Auckland meetup um, further north. We've ended up uh, working with the Australian meetups in Sydney and Melbourne. Um, and even though we're a relatively small group of people, we actually have been highly, highly productive. Uh, we've done Drupal 8 contribution sprints to core. Uh, we've written um, uh, documentation for Drupal 8. Uh, we've shared presentations between New Zealand and Australia. And all of this has happened uh, highly efficiently with a lot of productivity. Um, and so I'm really interested in sort of growing the number of a community, but I'm also really interested in how to squeeze productivity out of said community um, and making sure that everyone feels supported and feels like it's more than just a community of practice, but is actually a social thing, uh, you know, where they've got friends and they can feel a part of something that's bigger than them. So, yeah, I definitely see this in terms of how could we facilitate that. And just to answer the question, I would say, Drupal.org could create a new role and call it a uh, local chapter organizer. And this role gets given to anyone who can prove that they're organizing a meetup or a Drupal camp or something like that. And then it could be a very simple uh, portal for communications and resources. Because I know that a lot of us travel often and that we can benefit from each other. And I see a lot of the magic coming out of those networking events whereby the other communities get together. So I feel as though the Drupal website itself could actually facilitate that. Alex, it's like you're reading our minds. <laughs> we have totally had that discussion internally. More words later. <laughs> All right, thank you. Hey, Alex, Alex, are you going to be at uh, Melbourne? 
the rules I will be out. in Melbourne. Yeah, no, I'll be I'll, I'll, be, I'll see you there. I'll see you there. Oh, cool. then. We're going to have a beer together. Awesome. Yes, yeah, Ani really wants to have beers with all of you. Awesome. We established that yesterday. <laughs> Lots, of Lots of beers. Lots of beers. All right, good. Okay. Um, Jean or uh, Ratchet? Or me, me, me. Or Carlos? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So Carlos. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, yeah, I, I Carlos. Like I, I, I have I like a, a double experience on, on communities. I, I have the experience with the Latin American community, which is a community that has been working for years and getting together. There is so many leaders in every country. And it's a, it's a weird community because it's more like a whole deal community, the whole region, and, and, and also the small communities. But I, I'm also trying to, to, to start the Houston community. And I think one thing that the Drupal Association can help with is uh, with guidance and, 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 and resources as you started doing it. You know, we, we have Lauren for the community, so she's awesome, Jay Lauren. And um, uh, on new communities, it would be important, I think, that we can help whoever is starting that community to reach out to uh, as we said, with marketing to business outside uh, web development, I mean, people that is not using uh, Drupal to develop, but use it for their own apps and help develop that um, that business part of of, of, of of the local market. So it's better to get, you know, it's, it's hard to get a developer that is working on something, making money and tell them, you know, you can use this one, but you will have a hard time right now finding somebody local that will hire you or some or something like that. Uh, so, so I think we can uh, help um, the, the local communities organizing events and organizing um, meetups and camps that are orient that are a little bit more oriented to business than just simple developers. And I think that will help you know grow the other one by by, by extension. And in all communities and all local user groups, that they pretty much run by themselves. If you see San Francisco in the States, you see Chicago, etc., they pretty much are running by themselves. I think that the support is um, organizational and 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 and, and well, um, again, uh, helping the people reach out to uh, other places where the local community cannot reach out, but Drupal.org and the Drupal Association, which is pretty much presently everywhere, can. I don't even know if I make sense. Um, no, I think uh, you did, Carlos. Uh, Polly, uh, can I ask you, like, does Drupal Association maintain um, um, a lot of, like, a, a lot of stats on um, the amount of? I mean, you guys do maintain stats in terms of participation, right? Um, and how yeah. you get people beyond the group of funds. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say, like, the, the thing that we can count most easily is um, contribution that happens through Drupal.org, right? And we actually just really started collecting, Not we've always collected the data, we've actually just started tracking the data in the last 15 months. So um, it's still pretty new for us, um, and what we're um, trying, what we're working towards, is a, a larger plan where we understand more about the different kinds of contribution that people might make, whether it's a community contribution like running a user group, or organizing a camp, uh, or a documentation, you know, contribution, or or a training contribution. You ran a training and trained ten new Drupal developers, right? So those are the things that we're having internal conversations about how and where to track and make that data available. So, uh, this is Richard. I'll take my turn again. Yeah. So thanks, Annie. Actually, I was going to bring that point. You know that you know how how Drupal Association is collecting this data and you know providing these analytics to others. So you know, so a few days back, I was you know just trying to you know see what which are the biggest Drupal camps, which are the most active communities. You know, so that we can interact with those community leaders and you know get some help from you know doing or even something. Mumbai's so I right. believe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so I mean, uh, so Holly, this is something I believe would help. Uh, you know, if we get those kind of information, and you know, interaction between uh, you know these folks can really help in uh, you know uh, taking smaller communities. You know, they can get mentored by you know these uh, bigger communities who are doing a lot of these events. 
Uh, other point is that, uh, you know, about a lot of initiatives that Drupal Association do, like uh, is the community cultivation grants and the other initiatives as well. Uh, if we can do, you know, more of webinars or, you know, spread more awareness about, you know, how to use it with the leaders, uh, you know, I think that's going to uh, also hit the, the movement. Uh, I believe, you know, such kind of seminars did happen, but I think more of it can probably, you know, definitely, you know, take the way. I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and add in another one. Uh, this is Kelly. Um, well, Kelly, before we do that. Drupal training days coming up. That, before we do that, Kelly, can we, um, I just want to make sure we haven't lost Gene, and I don't want to lose him in this conversation. Oh, yeah, of course. I, I'm just, uh, I'm here listening. Uh, I think everybody's kind of really hit it on, on a lot of really great points. Um, for us, you know, I think the men having a place where, Newer groups or young groups that are struggling to bring people up in, or bring their groups up in smaller centers. Like for us, where, where I'm from in Kelowna, we're a pretty small city compared to like Toronto or Vancouver where they have very active groups. But really, between Vancouver and Toronto, there isn't a whole lot going on for like groups that are being able to sustain. So being able to reach out and, and connect with uh, peers and other people that are doing it successfully, get help maybe even find ways to bring remote people in to do presentations. Those are all the things that can, you know, would be great, especially from a, a newer, or from a smaller or newer groups that are trying to start uh, perspective. Those would be some really great um, places to be able to help and make those connections with, you know, the rock stars that are, are just slamming it out right now. Awesome. Thanks, Jean. And I, I want to. I think those are great points. And I, I want to get to a couple of other, um, couple of other questions that we have from the community, uh, so that we can, uh, you know, get their, get their questions answered. Um, one of the things that, uh, one of the issues that Dries brought up in his DrupalCon Amsterdam keynote, uh, if you saw it, was the idea of how to, how to incentivize contribution in the Drupal ecosystem. Particularly, how do we get business owners to um, to allow for contribution from their developer staff? Um, so, you know, that might be something like giving their developers 10% time to work on Drupal or you know Drupal contrib uh, issues, or having sprint days in their office, whatever it is. Just making sure that um, we are, we are making it. Um, easier and better for um, companies to get their workers to contribute to the project um, and not just to client work. And uh, one of the questions we have the community is, do you support that proposal? Um, and what kinds of incentives do you think are appropriate for the Drupal Association to be advocating for um, or presenting to the community? Well, I think as a business owner, one of the key things would be for, especially the smaller shops and stuff, to hear from the people that are doing it right now and kind of what's the return on investment that they're getting because at the end of the day that's going to be important to the business owners is what, what kind of bang for the buck are they getting are they getting some marketing cred are they you know is this really are they seeing a huge increase in talent getting ramped up quicker you know things like that um, maybe lack of a better word maybe some case studies or some mentoring tips again from from the shops that are doing it and that and are seeing success from it because at the end of the day it's you know <laughs> the shops need to need to make money and they need sometimes we need to get out of that mindset that every single hour has to be billable maybe if it's just what it, what is that ratio and what have other people have seen that has been successful yeah this is Kelly I can agree with that and I could also uh, respond to those those great questions that I think we should be asking the, the people that are involved in this way. Um, for me, it's the whole way that we fill our pipeline at all. It's, it's just by being involved in the community and doing what we love to do. It's a really beautiful uh, ecosystem to, that, that has really taken care of us and has really associated, had, uh, caused us to associate contribution with survival in this industry and collaboration with everybody in the community um, and to somehow uh, reach out to those people and um, and make an exam a, a positive great example of that uh, to encourage other other teams to contribute 
Uh, one of the thing I agreed with a lot of what Dries said. Um, I don't I don't think it's so much that we we need to um, bring more business to these companies. I mean that's always great. I I wouldn't say that that I'm having an issue with that. Uh, but it's more about um, convincing the business of the the points that that were just brought up, um, such as you know training and onboarding and getting people more involved, and how beneficial it is for team building to contribute uh, and collaborate in in something that is much bigger than than uh, the company itself, which is uh, which is Drupal, which which we all uh, are professionals in. Um, I'd like to get in there. Uh, uh, what I would like to say. What Dree said is definitely um, very important. Like uh, at Accelerant, we actually have a role for a D8 uh, contributor. Uh, contributions are important. Now, contributions to me is not just code contributions. Rachat and I have been doing a lot of contributions uh, in terms of making sure that Drupal is known around the community. So that that to me is very important. And and how Drupal Association. Uh, comes into the picture in that particular aspect for me, yes. Uh, a Drupal Association provides a fantastic validation of what we try to do. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's uh, that's what what I have to say about that. Yeah, this is Carlos. Oh, uh, well, I think yeah, we we we've been touched the two points that are important. Um, Holly, you, you, your question is what can do the Drupal Association, and I think that is such a complicated subject that I don't think we're going to find a strategy right now, but I think that the two points that we have to keep in mind uh, for going forward is the education to the companies, as as, um, as uh, Kelly said, and I forgot the other name, sorry, uh, but for the companies to understand that giving back to the project is on their benefit, that uh, contributing in any way, in documentation, in translation, in, 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 in the community part, helping the Drupal camp, helping Drupal camp is important and gives them back. And, and definitely, I think the Drupal Association in Drupal and Drupal.org should find a way to, to bring that recognition to numbers or to a way, and, and I don't know, I, I, I know we've been talking about some kind of marketing based on contributions or marketing based on how much that company is giving back to the project that is not easy to do right now in this call but uh, I, I think that's the way I mean uh, if we have a company that's actively contributing and actively developing the open source part of Drupal they should get some kind of benefit uh, from the exposure that Drupal Association and, and Drupal.org have and the more business come this way, if if it happens, we'll we'll make them you know see the benefits more and get more people um, help into the project, and we can move the project forward faster. Thank you. Hello, this is Richard. So my point here is, uh, uh, you know, in Drupal uh, Mumbai community, what we have been trying to do is, you know, we are initially chasing after developers and, you know, doing events and trying to get them in here. And, and recently we figured out a way to, you know, just tag a person to an organization. Uh, we, have been, we have introduced a concept called uh, organizational Spock. And, you know, we just reach out to this guy in all the organization. And we say that, you know, this company is participating and not, you know, this persons are participating. Yes, the individuals are of course credited, but you know, in all our messages that we are sending out in all the events and code sprints, we are also sending the message that you know these are the organizations that participate. These are the you know the number of participations. This is the you know kind of commit stats coming from them or kind of participation coming from them. I think this has been very successful in terms of it has built a kind of. Uh, competition also, uh, new persons, new organizations are also trying to chip in and understand that why we are not there. And they are trying to figure out a way how we can get into that. So uh, I think at global level, uh, maybe if something like this, uh, you know, Drupal Association can also use to, you know, 
provide some kind of stats on you know how organizations are participating uh, and could not be just in terms of code contribution like Annie said you know it should be you know other ways of recognition like you know how they're sponsoring how they're even you know participating organizing events and you know participating in different you know cons and you know different Drupal events in their regional and national communities I think that kind of thing when we see that stats uh, you know I know it will be very difficult to validate that and uh, you know but that could you know kind of raise a kind of uh, uh, you know a competition and you know people will definitely try to figure out and go up the rank and uh, it could work awesome. uh, Holly I feel as though I've got some really good answers in this regard from what I've heard from the others uh, but unfortunately, just when you were asking the question, someone knocked on my door and I, had to, I was distracted. Could you please paraphrase for me what the question was? Uh, yes, let's see if I can do that. <laughs> yeah, we were just talking about Dries's keynote in Amsterdam <laughs> and uh, how you feel like the association may be, um, may be able to play a role in helping incentivize contribution from the business community. Right. Um, I think. There's a number of different ways that that can be done, and from what I've remembered, from what the others have said, I think those are all really, really good solutions. Um, and I think uh, uh, Rashid's made a good point about climbing the rank. You know, everyone who's in the business of Drupal wants to have as much integrity as possible. Uh, you know, a lot of us on our websites have Drupal Association uh, member uh, badges and meetup organizer badges and Drupal 8 contributor. Uh, these are all you know logos uh, that a lot of us have in the footers of our websites. Um, and I feel as though that's one really basic way to incentivize contribution. Um, but you know, further than that, I feel as though, again, Drupal.org can facilitate a lot of this by having certain roles uh, that people can you know, be nominated to receive if they can prove that they have actually made a lot of contribution. And you, know, you could run uh, competitions for who had uh, contributed the most. You could uh, have a list of partners of Dribble.org on the website, uh, companies that have contributed lots of time, and individuals. I think there is that divide between the individual con contributor and the corporate contributor, and I think that that actually does need a bit more thought. Um, but, you know, by and large, I, I feel as though there is already a lot of incentivization there, because in a lot of cases, companies have uh, an implicit interest in making sure that the platform is stable, um, and in Wellington anyway. Uh, we organize a, a Drupal 8 code sprint. Um, we, well, we try to organize one for every month. Uh, and that just happens naturally. And a lot of the programmers that I know are motivated to contribute uh, just because they like to contribute. I mean, I don't know that we need to make too much of a commercial incentive. Um, but if we were going to make commercial incentives, I can think of a number of different ways that that could happen. Awesome. And Ani, did we hear from you on this question? Um, well, um, well, I, I don't know, maybe, but yes, uh, what um, <laughs> what Alice has said is, is actually pretty. Uh, you know, I think everybody said uh, their point. I think it's uh, completely. Uh, look, uh, at the end of the day, businesses need to make money. Drupal contribution should become part of the part of the way that you do business. At Accelerant, for example. We make it part of what we do on a, on a daily basis. For example, we you know like we, we were working on a project, and we discovered a couple of problems with a couple of modules, let's, let's say, and we, we actually figured out a solution, and we open sourced that. And that's the idea. Uh, we should be able to just <coughs> put out the uh, solutions in the community. And yes, uh, where can Drupal Association help? Yes. Um, definitely make sure that um, people that are joining Drupal Association know, businesses and otherwise, that it's important to communicate. It's important to, to contribute. It's important to be part of the community. I mean, community itself does not grow without contribution. And that is something that perhaps Drupal Association could actually do a little better a job at. Right. Awesome. Good. Well, I'm going to uh, switch gears on you guys with another community contributed question here. I just have to say, way to go, community. Good questions. Uh, you're smart. 
and you're all pretty too, right? <laughs> but you're very smart. Um, uh, here is the question, which I think is a really important one. It's one that we've talked about a lot. Um, you know, the, the issue has raised itself in the community several times. So we're wondering uh, from any of the candidates, do you have any ideas on how to promote diversity in the community? You know, beyond what we do now, which is saying we value diversity, right? Which we do, right? Um, what are the things that the association can help do to really affect change so that we can see more women, people of color, more participants from around the world, and, and really create the diversity that we that we say that we value, uh, but we don't really have in our community yet. Ooh, ooh, can I go? Yes. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go to that. Is that Carlos? Kelly, Kelly, Kelly. Kelly. Yeah. This is okay. Kelly. Um, well, so I, I don't know if this is uh, doable, if this is on brand for the Drupal Association, but I'll tell you what I saw work um, recently. Uh, we were doing a conference, and um, I've been feeling I've been feeling kind of a little bit of Drupal burnout in my community. You know, the number of people coming to each meetup is in a decline. I think you know it's because it, you don't there aren't a lot of new presentations on Drupal seven, and Drupal eight isn't out enough yet that that Drupal eight presentations are really you know that common. And um, we really wanted to do you know something bigger and bring more uh, people into the conference. So we made it not just about Drupal. And one of the things that that did was that lowered the, a barrier to entry uh, where our previous Drupal camps have been a little intimidating. So it's really hard to get someone who doesn't know if they're into Drupal or not to come and choose Drupal when it's a camp or conference where Drupal's already chosen. So if you have it about, if you have events or, or if you focus on things that are about more than just Drupal and then Drupal's in there as, you know, my opinion, the best choice among editors, then people can come in just checking things out. They don't have to, you know, they're not trying to fake it that they're a Drupal person and they can come in and they can actually choose Drupal. Um, and this worked really well at, at a conference that we put on. We uh, over doubled. Um, uh, we only tracked uh, gender um, uh, equality at the or gender balance at, at the conference, and uh, we had an awesome increase in numbers. And uh, I think, and, and of course, since their uh, Drupal is extremely popular in this area, it was very popular uh, in terms of presentations. So I I like to believe that um, we got a few Drupal uh, um, people checking out Drupal, and actually, uh, evidence of this was on the on on the sprint day that we had, we had a number of people that had not, you know, used Drupal before, and they they got convinced along the way to come and see how they could get involved and, and maybe start helping. So. Great example. Other? I, I will, yeah. yeah, I will, I will um, jump there. Okay, keep I mean, going. Okay, uh, I, I think that's a, that's a great idea, Kelly. Um, the I see several things. I mean, um, I told this story to, to Holly in, in Drupal Pitch. I, I, I went to Dallas and I saw a conference previous to the Drupal camp that was uh, results-oriented web. And that was around Drupal, but that it, was, it, it was more about business, uh, using social media, content strategies, etc. Uh, today, nowadays, we can involve the PHP world much more than before because we're moving forward towards that getting out of that Iceland. Yep. Um, so uh, all those things will help bring different people. Uh, and, 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 and that will help. In the other hand, something that we did uh, with the Latin American community for DrupalCon is uh, the Drupal Association, and I thank them for that, work with us, a, a group of local volunteers. And they really, really let us have a voice on what was being done because they understood that the culture may be different and, and, and the way we see things may be different. And I think that's something that we can do on the different groups, minorities, whatever we want to call it. Uh, I, I think I'm a minority because I'm Hispanic, so I don't see a problem there. Um, is, is understanding that difference in culture and working with people that is already participating in the, in the project 
and how to reach out to, to those person that may be, you know, uh, scared by Drupal because Drupal is a big monster and it's scary when you see it from the outside and, and, and find how to work together and, and, and reach out to different people that is not just developers but I mean we have a whole a whole sorry cycle of, of, of different um, roles that we can play in a in a web development project that they may not even be related to Drupal directly but can work together. So in, in, in summary, I think, yeah, we could involve different, you know, the business world, the PHP world, uh, other web development strategies, the, the Node.js, JavaScript framework, whatever, and also working with the different cultures and way of seeing things on, 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 on the different groups to, to, to make sure we have some people that can guide the efforts so they come across correctly. I hope that makes sense. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hello, this is okay. So this is Rachel and uh, so uh, maybe one way uh, we can try to bring more diversity is to you know do a more cross-pollinated events. There are a lot of technologies that work you know around Drupal's like Carlos mentioned. So doing an event with them or involving them into the community or doing a community event with, you know, their event, you know, I think could bring, you know, a lot more diversity. Thanks, Rachid. Other folks want to add some thoughts to that? Um, okay, I'll jump in at this point. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to because, um, uh, sorry, it's Alex here. Uh, I actually have a lot of experience with this because uh, last year, early last year, I started working with um, Catalyst IT, which is probably New Zealand's biggest uh, Drupal shop, um, around how to bring in more women because it's, it's a problem in our industry um, in that, you know, I would say maybe 80 to 90 percent of all our developers are male, um, and that's, that's probably being generous. Um, there's been other communities in Wellington that have really effectively reached out to women uh, for instance, uh, there's a collective um, agency here in Wellington uh, which created something called Ruby Girls, uh, which is Ruby training, uh, Ruby on Rails training for women. It's completely free, um, and I believe that they're producing something like 50 programmers per year. Um, and these are really high quality programmers as well. So, you know, th there's models that do exist that have proved this to be effective. And I think it's different based upon which country, which culture. Uh, which city you're talking about, um, but I do know that there are formulas that can be quite effective. And what we're doing right now is trying to uh, create outreach with high schools and universities, whereby we can go and talk to the students and say, which of you are thinking about careers in IT? Which of you, you know, want to be web developers? Um, and really at that point, early on, uh, sell them the idea that Drupal is what they should be learning. And then, of course, we need to facilitate that by actually providing the resources and the training required um, to graduate them into someone who's competent with Drupal. I mean, a lot of us must have seen the Drupal learning curve diagram. It's kind of the, the cliff face that everyone falls off when they try and learn how to do Drupal. Um, and this is something that I encounter a lot because, in fact, in the same room as me while I'm talking right now, I've got two people who have been learning Drupal for the past uh, month or two. Um, and we have three new interns starting next month that are all learning Drupal as well. So at the moment, our shop is sort of producing quite a few Drupal trainees, and that's a very intentional and selfish strategy. We're not doing that to be nice. We're doing that because we desperately need them. Um, I also think that female programmers uh, often tend to be better, or at the very least, uh, more disciplined. At least they turn up on time. Um, so, yeah, I mean, by and large, I feel as though there are strategies that can exist um, I think that some of it's a private responsibility for companies to go out there and actually advocate they do free training um, and offer internships. But in terms of your question, Holly, how can the association help? Um, at the moment, in terms of working with high schools and universities and advocating Drupal to them, we have to create all those resources from scratch. Um, I know that there's lots of different Drupal education materials out there, um, but I think that having association approved resources for engaging tertiary and secondary education, I feel as though that would be a really excellent starting point, even if it was just a PDF with 10 pages um, that would start circulating and give people an entrance point to actually engage their local communities. So I feel as though it needs to start with high schools 
and uh, and and um, universities. Yeah. Holly, uh, let me ask you, Sunny. So, in Drupal Association, you are the director. Megan is the associate director. Come on. How have you been able to uh, build that diversity within that organization? Give us some pointers. Oh, now I have to answer questions? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's for the comments page. Exactly. <laughs> well, that's totally fair. That's totally fair. I think the real, I think the real problem um, for us in being able to tackle this in many ways that we just don't have dedicated resources for it, right? Like it takes more than intent, uh, right? It takes action, and um, I think we certainly try to do a number of things which are necessary but not sufficient. So we try to model the behavior we want to see in the community when it comes to diversity. Uh, we try to use the right kind of language to be inclusive. Um, you know, uh, many times you all have pointed out, you know, contribution is not just code, for example, right? That's, that's something that we really try to echo um, in the community. Um, when we're doing our work, we have a newfound focus uh, on trying to work the right way with local communities, especially uh, communities that are, you know, different than our own. Uh, so Carlos's example of DrupalCon Latin America, and I'm sure, um, Annie, you've had some experience with Megan now um, talking yeah. about uh, bringing DrupalCon to India in 2016. So, you know, I, I think that what we've tried to do is send the right signals, use the right language, model some behavior, uh, but we haven't done and could be doing is, you know, developing actual active programs along some of the lines that uh, you guys uh, have mentioned here today. So. That's how I'd answer that. Ooh. Nice. <laughs> that's a total <laughs> cop-out. I, I just want to recognize that that's a complete cop-out, right? But um, so we recognize we have a ton of work to do there. Yep. Um, let's see. Um, Gene, did you have something you wanted to add to this question? Uh, not overly. I, I would have just... Uh, <laughs> Everybody had some really good hands-on examples, especially Alex and stuff that are talking yeah. what they've done in New Zealand. So it's just to kind of echo and ditto that. It would be great. To, I think we're going to need to be cross-pollinating with other systems that share with share with us to, uh, to grow it and diversify more. Right. Well, listen, guys. We have what. It is best. Um, listen, folks. Uh, we have speaking of diversity and language. Um, we have about uh, 13 minutes left, according to my clock, for this session. And I want to um, pose one final question. I think we can get one more round of answers in uh, for folks here. And that question is this. Um, okay, so listen carefully. I'm going to tell you the mission of the Drupal Association. The Drupal Association, um, well, sorry, the Drupal powers the best of the web. The Drupal Association uh, unites a global open source uh, community to build and promote Drupal. So what I'd love to hear from you is what part of that mission is meaningful to you, uh, is most meaningful to you, uh, and you want to be able to act on as a board member? For me, it's global. Global is important. Global Drupal um, adoption is important, and for me, contribution is important. That's it. Um, this is Rajesh. Oh, yeah. oh, no, so, yeah, go ahead, Rajesh. So um, I, I feel it's, it's like inclusion. You know, the way you can, you know, easily get in touch with the community. I can, you, you know, uh, was in Drupal in Austin, and you know, can easily go talk to Dries, talk to Holly. So I mean, it's so easy to interact with everybody, get in touch with them. People are so uh, friendly to help each other. I think that's the the real beauty of you know this community. I think that's that's what uh, you know being, being you know driven very beautifully. Um, I, I think the uh, building community part, this is Kelly, is, is the most important part to me. Um, I've, uh, I think in, in open source, I tend to just see you know, where the community's at, and that's the technology that I'm most interested in being involved in, and, and that's rewarded, that, that I've been rewarded uh, by making that decision. Um, so I think building, building the community is by far the best. Uh, I think uh, 
Larry Garfield once said that op open source thrives to the extent at which it's shared, and building community involves connecting uh, more people to collaborate um, to uh, allow open source to thrive. Hmm. Yeah, I, I completely agree with Kelly. Yeah, I think it's kind of talking with. Uh, uh, sorry, I, I had the pleasure of uh, Alex here. Yeah, I had the pleasure of talking with Larry Garfield at Drupal South about the same thing, and uh, you know, I often feel as though building the community is almost the easier part of it. Uh, keeping people excited about the community, giving them reasons to return, um, and making them, you know, part of something social which extends beyond just a career. I feel as though facilitating that sense of being in a place where you're safe, where you've got friends who understand you, who understand your pain, who know why you were slamming your head on your desk for three hours because you couldn't address a narrow message that you didn't understand. Um, you know, these are all the sorts of things that I think add up and make Drupal a very special community. That is more than I've seen WordPress communities and I've attended other conferences for other web technologies. And while they have a lot of the similar things, um, I feel as though, at least here in Wellington and the places, in, like in London, when I went to the DrupalCon in London, the community there and the level of socialization is just very, very high. Um, things like the, 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 the Drupal uh, beer pub crawl. Um, I actually think sometimes that those are more important than actual formal presentations because that's where uh -huh. real connections are made and where real friendships are created. Um, so yeah, I would actually come at this from a social angle. And while I'm all a, I'm a person who's all about the community, um, I'm not just interested in the community of practice. I'm interested in how do we create relationships that are more than just professional. Um, and you know, how does that look going forwards? Something I've often wondered is how many babies exist today that wouldn't have if it wasn't for DribbleCons. Please don't make me ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, this is Carlos, and I think uh, I, I agree with everybody. I think we are all here because we, we want to help with the community. And uh, for me, being part of two communities, uh, the Latin American community and the American community based in Houston, um, that bridging and that growing of community is something that, that, that really, really excites me. And as um, uh, Alex was saying, it's, it's not just, you know, the, the networking, the professional uh, uh, links that you can create on this community is also the friendships. Uh, as everybody, you know, you were talking ab about Larry. Larry and me, we spent a bunch of time in Bogota after DrupalCon, and 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 we were talking about all these. And and, and with, uh, I agree. I mean, this community is amazing. This community is uh, a group of friends and and uh, a group of business people, a group of professionals, and. Uh, we can very well be, you know, uh, party playing tejo in Bogota, or we can be in, in, in the in, in a Drupal con just uh, talking about business. It's, it's, it's so much that whenever you start talking with people that is really involved in the community, uh, you start hearing that, like me, I've been in a, a two two uh, Drupal cons and I have yet to see more than five presentations because I'm always talking with people and you you, 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 you get uh, on those relationships and, and those friendships. So I think that's the part that um, most um, get to me from the mission and uh, that I would want to help is to grow the community and reach out to more people, different people and and, and, and keep creating this, this this amazing world that is the Drupal ecosystem. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, not sure what, me. I'm not sure what else to add on top of that. It's for me too. What's going to be the answer about community and growing it, and really kind of helping push to show that you don't just have to be a developer to be part of the community, and that there's so much more to be involved in it. I think that's going to be you know another yes. key, and that you know again that helps with the diversity question that we had earlier is just to really hammer home you don't have to write code to be part of this. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Oh, I forgot. To, I had a tough time with the picture switching this time, you guys. I apologize. Um, <laughs> I have a lot of devices in front of me right now. <laughs> um, I just want to say thank you so much to um, the candidates for being here and for sharing 
so many great ideas. Um, I have, in the last two sessions, written pages of notes and thoughts about uh, things that we should be thinking about doing or doing better. Um, and I just think it's really indicative of exactly what you all said in your last answer, just the power of the community. Um, you guys are so smart, and I know that Drupal is um, an amazing project because we put that collective wisdom together, right? So thanks for sharing with us and being so generous with us. Um, thanks also to the people who were hanging in um, and participating as attendees here today and for supplying such great and challenging questions. Um, I love that we don't shy away from big problems here. That's really awesome. Uh, and so what I want to do now is just uh, wrap up and uh, remind folks that we have um, a couple more uh, ways to interact with the candidates. We have our final Meet the Candidate Q&A session tomorrow, um, and that takes place at 1230 Pacific time slash some other time wherever you live. Um, and I recommend checking that out. Um, you can go to drupal.org slash nominations. Um, we did try to list out the time zones there. Um, hopefully we got them close to right. Um, and uh, you can, so you can listen in on that one. And then, of course, um, as I mentioned, every candidate, as you can see, has a Q&A section in their candidate profile. So if you didn't get a question answered today and you want to know how someone in particular feels, uh, if you are logged in, you can come to the Drupal.org, uh, associates.drupal.org slash nominations, uh, and you can pose your question to candidates right there. Um, and that uh, Q&A session will be, will be available um, on those candidate pages throughout the voting process as well. So keep interacting, keep asking tough questions, and then on March 9th, get ready to vote. Uh, and spread the word. Um, we had two main goals for this election cycle. One was to increase the diversity of candidates, and I think that really happened, and that's fantastic. Uh, speaking of encouraging diversity, I guess that was not a sham answer. I can check a box. Um, I did one. Um, and I would like to, uh, th so that was the first goal. And the second goal uh, was to really increase the participation from the community. So we need you to vote, and we need you to help uh, other folks uh, vote as well. So. Make that all happen. I think that's the end of my public service announcement. So just thanks again, guys. <laughs> and um, have a great day slash night. Whatever is going to happen for you. Thank and you thank you for everybody. To everybody. For yes, to everybody. To thank, you. thank you so much, everybody. Hopefully we'll catch you all at DrupalCon. Thank you, Holly. Thank you, Holly. Bye, guys. Thanks for this. You all made it. Bye.